Hello there, welcome to part four of how to build a fish pond. This is basically just a short summary of how we finished the pond off. Uh, it was more or less finished in part three, but I'll run through what we've done just to give it the finishing touches. Obviously now the pond is full. Uh, you can't see any of the black line around the edges. So it looks a lot better. Water kind of comes halfway up the rockery stone there, giving it a nice natural edge. This will allow the water to drop maybe two or three inches or so before you start seeing the, the black line around the sides. Meaning that you don't have to top it up. You know, every week in the summer it'll go a long time between top ups. We brought a load more rockery stone this morning. And we've basically just dug it in around this mound here. We've taken a lot of this, uh, the grass out of the mound because unfortunately the dude that dug it out, instead of removing the grass first and putting it in a pile and then digging all the soil out, he decided to dig the, the whole lot out together and just clash it all in one heap. So we've had a hell of a job digging all the, the grass out of here. There will still be grass in here. So I've advised the folks I'm doing the job for just to leave it till the spring. Uh, we're in the back end of the year now, it's late October. Just leave it till the spring, wait till the grass comes up, spray it off and then plant it. We did put that plant in there, it was actually growing out of the heap of rockery stone that we brought. This is the pile of grass that we've dug out of the pile whilst we've been shaping the, the heap. There will be at least that amount still in the pile, unfortunately. So walking around the back of the pile, you can see the odd rockery stone plugged in there. We'll just kind of put them in randomly. The last thing you want is something that looks contrived. Obviously the pile of soil is still pretty rough, but it's been raining overnight and to wander around on there would just make it like a total quagmire. It would be a hell of a job. So I'm going to leave it for a week or so, come back, plant the pond up, and rake all this hopefully when it's dry and you know give it a really neat finish cascades looking nice pretty natural sort of effect although you know we have obviously put spill stones in there it falls quite well and really oxygenates the water quite nicely you cut the liner and underlay it back really neatly around the sides the last thing you want to have is liner hanging out it just looks blatantly obvious that you've lined it obviously all of these stones are cemented in so they're not going to go anywhere safe to walk on and climb over all the stones in the rockery aren't cemented in they're just literally dug into the ground When you look at the path of the water coming down the cascade, you can see by the bubbles, it flows right along this back edge in the shallows. It's exactly what it wants to do. The pump's sitting in this deep end here, moving water into the filter, back down the cascade, and it's arriving right at the far end of the pond. So the water has to travel all the way from here to here before it gets pushed back into the filter and down the cascade, which is great. We have left enough pipe on the pump to be able to move the pump from here to here in the winter. By having the pump in the shallow end where the cascade pours in, means it'll keep the filter alive in the winter, but won't disturb the main body of water where the fish will be hibernating. The filter that we've used in this job is from a German company called Oase. Uh, they make very good pumps and filters. We've also used their pump. And this filter is a filter clear 30,000, which is probably is a little bit too big for this pond, but there is going to be koi going in here from the lady's previous pond, so I always like to go slightly over on the filtration. There's an integrated 55 watt UV, runs right down the middle of here. And what happens with this is, the water comes in here from the pond, it flows around and around the UV, which kills the algae, kills bacteria, pathogens, parasites and so on. And then it flows through a series of foams in the buried part. This is probably about two foot, two foot six deep, 
in the ground, foams, water goes through the foams, out this pipe, up to the cascade. There is another fitting here which allows you to attach a pipe which can then lead to a drain and when you want to clean the filter all you do is turn that to point towards the drain leaving the pump on take the handle pump it up and down and what that does it actually washes the foams out in your pond water removing all the muck to the drain means that you don't have to pull this apart and you don't get your hands mucky. Once you've finished the cleaning process, all you do is just turn the valve back here, put your cap back on. Really simple to clean. This is the pump that I'm using. It's an Aquamax Eco 8000 from Awazi. Heavy duty pipe means it's not going to crack, it's very hard to pierce and it's going to last a hell of a long time. The pump itself has got a five year guarantee, so it's going to last well. The last thing I want to do is come back to a job because of a faulty pump or something getting blocked or some sort of problem that could have been avoided. This particular pump actually has two inlets. It's got the obvious one through all these holes here in the cage but it's also got one here as well. And by taking this off and attaching a hose tail and an extra bit of pipe, you can have it either go into a skimmer to suck all the muck off the top of the pond, or you can have it go into a smaller version of this cage, which is called a satellite strainer, which means that you could pull from two different places in the pond. So you could pull from the deep end and the shallow end simultaneously. So really the key to a successful pond is obviously creating it the right size for the fish you're going to stock and also having a good pump which acts as the heart of your pond, a bit like the heart in your chest. Instead of pumping blood around, it's pumping water around and also a good filter. Think of this as the lungs of your pond. This will filter out all the muck that your pump pumps into here and hopefully you should have crystal clear water. Obviously the pond at present hasn't got crystal clear water, we've only just filled it up and we've been working around it with mucky soil, but I'll do an update when I come back and sort the bank side out and it should be crystal clear then. That's it for this series of videos, we've switched the cascade off now, the, the cement's only been in there a couple of days, so we had it running before just to test that everything was okay, it is, which is always a bonus. And we're going to leave that to go off for at least a week before we set it away proper. Thanks for watching this series. Any questions, put them in the comments below. If you've liked it, give it a thumbs up, favourite it, whatever. Thanks for watching. Simultaneously. I think I got it near enough the first time. Simultaneously. <laughs> Simultaneously. Still got it wrong, didn't I? Simultaneously. Simultaneously. Is that right? Summon. It's not sum. Simultaneously. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Simultaneously. Ah, oh, that's one. Simultaneous. Uh, simultaneous. Simultaneously. Uh, simultaneous. Blimey, Governor. Proper. <laughs> Proper. <laughs>